Hi, and welcome to the last part of analytical techniques and quality control, which deals with quantitative analytical methods. Our learning outcomes in this part will be to first to interpret the chromatographic data to determine whether a sample is within the required limits of the specifications set by a pharmacopoeia, and second to understand the application of Lambert P law to quality control of medicines. So in this recording, we will be looking at two types of basic quantitative methods in instrumental chromatography, single point calibration and multiple points calibration. And secondly, we will see an example of how to apply the Lambert P law uh, to a UV applied to quality control of medicines. Let's talk about the different quantitative methods we can use in instrumental chromatography. Basic quantitative chromatography, according to pharmacopoeia, contemplates four different techniques and analysis. Single point calibration, multiple points calibration, single point calibration with internal standard, and a spike sample. In this module, we will only see examples of single point calibration and multiple points calibration. Single point calibrations with internal standards and spike samples are a little more advanced and we're not going to touch them now. But you have some examples in the notes provided in Canva. It's the moment to realize that detectors are not always responding in the same way. The detectors have limits of detection and the response of the detector, which is what we call usually a peak, is proportional to the concentration of the compound in the sample. That is, the more compound we inject, the bigger the peak, the less compound, the smaller the peak. But these detectors will not probably be able to detect two tiny peaks or two big peaks. Look at the illustration. Two tiny peaks will be very dangerously close to the background noise of the electric, uh, electronics devices that are the detectors. Whether the detector will always give you a number but this number will not be proportional to the concentration of this peak. There is a sweet spot where the detector is accurate and proportional to any concentrations you inject. Let's assume in this example that in between 1 and 3 millimolar, you may have a perfect line. The more concentration, the more response of the detector. However, beyond certain limits, the peaks will be starting to be non-symmetrical. This is due to that the fact that we are saturating or overloading the column, the chromatographic column. And then there's too much stuff going through the column and we have kind of a jam in the traffic where the Compounds start to go out of the column, and then there's a tail of the same compound taking more time than necessary to uh, evacuate this column. This is the example where we inject 8 millimolar in this example, and we get this tailing peak. This is inaccurate and not proportional. Look, the machine gives us 66,000 units, but actually, if it was proportional according to the, the previous uh, races, it had to be some sort of 64,000. Finally, if we inject way too much, the peak goes out of a scale and the detector is totally overloaded and it cannot measure the peak because it doesn't know how high it goes. So we have to be always uh, careful and known 
and know very well our machines as to know where do we have uh, to dilute the sample or not to get the injection within the, the actuate and proportional uh, or the detection limits of the machine. Single point calibration is the easiest of the methods we can use uh, to measure a drug or any compound with the help of a HPLC or a gas chromatograph. In this method, we will have a solution containing a known concentration, which is called the standard solution, of the compound to be measured in the sample. This standard is bought from the pharmacopoeias and are certified to be what they say to be. They are very expensive, as I said, and uh, you have to always compare your medicine with the certified standard. Well, as you see, we inject a primary field benzene, one molar in the machine, and we get a peak 8,000 units. Then we inject our unknown concentration, our sample of the compound. And then we compare with the previous one. Let's see in this example, we inject and we get a peak of 16 units. Well, if when injecting one molar of trimethylbenzene, we've got a thousand and now we have double, we may have injected double the concentration that we did with the standard that is two molar. If we put it in mathematical terms, we should do the following. Remember, we have the two solutions, one with known concentration of compound to be analyzed, I'm going to write it in red, and second, the unknown concentration of a compound, or the medicine or the API on uh, the case of quality control of medicine. If we, if we assume that the area of the peaks is proportional to the concentration, we can say that if we divide the areas of both peaks, will be similar to dividing the concentration of those peaks, because they're always proportional. Then, having said this equation, we can work out any part of it. In this case, in the previous example, we know everything but the concentration in solution 2. By working out this part of the equation, we get a result. Obviously, single point calibration is uh, easy, but not as accurate as if we create a multiple, multiple point calibration. To prepare a calibration curve, we have to prepare a stock solution of analytical standard, and then we dilute it to a series of known concentrations. Then we analyze by HPLC the different dilutions, and we calculate the, well, we are given by the machine the AUCs, the areas of each peak. We plot these areas against the concentration, and then we inject the HPLC, the unknown sample, get the area under the curve of the peak and interpolate it in our previous made calibration curve. Imagine in this case that we've done this calibration curve by injecting different solutions of concentrations that we know. In this case, we've injected 2.5 molar, 1 molar, and 2 molar. Then we inject the unknown, the unknown concentration solution, and we get 6,000 units as the integration, which I wrote in blue. Just simply by interpolation in the previously made multiple regression curve, we can find immediately that the concentration of the unknown solution was 1.5 molar. We've been 
very very uh, simple in making the numbers very wrong. What happens in real life is that even if the standard solutions are apparently round, like 2, 1, or 0 0.5 molar, the units we have in response of the detector will not that round and will not be exactly as proportional as we might think it should be. Look in this case, 0 0.5 molar would be around 2000 and then we would expect that 1 molar or 2 molar are 4000 or 8000 but this is not the case. The machines are always having a small degree of inaccuracy and this results in non-round numbers or non-exactly proportional numbers. Well, let's see how we can work with this HPLC and this degree of inaccuracy by making multiple points ca uh, calibrations and interpolating in it the results we get from our medicines or API. In this case, we prepare standard solutions of paracetamol from a stock solution and we inject one by one these solutions we make in the HPLC and build up a calibration curve. Then we take 2.5 milliliters of paracetamol liquid injectable solution and we dilute it up to 100 milliliters. The diluted solution is then injected into the HPLC. The area that gives the peak of the paracetamol in our medicine then, in our diluted medicine, is 45,205 units. Then we can determine the concentration of the paracetamol in the injectable solution by going back and correcting all these solutions. It's probably easier to see it if we draw these different solutions that we made up and we put it in a table. We created a calibration curve with 3, 2, 1.5, 1 milligram, and, and 0.5 milligrams per 100 milliliters and inject them in the HPLC and obtain different AUCs or areas under the curve. Now we plot all these values against the concentration and we get a linear regression which coefficient is 0 0.9972. It's very close to 1 but it could be better. We could aim for 0 0.9999. Anyway, we'll try to work with these numbers in this problem and then what we have to do is as easy as interpolating the value that our medicine, diluted medicine, gave in the HPC when it was injected. It was 45,205. This interpolates into the middle, the middle of the lin linear regression, which is good. We don't want to go too far to the extremes, which are more inaccurate. The calibration curve tells us that the solution we have injected into the HPLC contains 1.266 milligrams per 100 milliliters solution. Now it's a matter of going back to the original medicine. Look, we injected a solution which was diluted from the medicine. 2.5 milliliters of the medicine were diluted in 200 milliliters. This is a 40 times dilution. So the HPLC give me a straight away the area under the curve of this diluted solution and I can very easily interpolate and immediately know how much concentration of in a paracetamol is in the injectable 1.266 milligrams per 100 milliliter. But to come back to the original medicine, to the undiluted medicine, I have to correct the dilution. That is, if I dilute it 40 times, I have to time 40 this value. So 40 times this value 
is 50.64 milligrams per 100 milliliters. And this is the concentration of paracetamol in the injectable in the original medicine. Does our medicine comply with the pharmacopoeia? Well, imagine that the manufacturer claims the injectable to be 50 milligrams per 100 milliliters. Let's compare it with the manual, with, with the result we already obtained. We obtain 50.64, and if we compare it with 50, and we make this, this comparison in percentages, we found that 50.64 is 101.28% the claimed con uh, concentration. That is, is 1.28% above what it should be. This is within the 5% allowed for paracetamol products in pharmacopoeia. So all is good with this injectable, it complies, it's uh, very, very, very accurate, the concentration they claim with the real concentration, and it can go to the market. Let's now um, see a simple application of the quantitative UV to the quality control of medicine. Let's see how we apply ultraviolet to the quality control of labetalol hydrochloride injections. We have 20 milliliter samples claiming to be at a strength of 5 milligrams milliliter. We measure the absorbance of the solution between the samples at a wavelength 302 nanometers in a 1 centimeter path length cell. Then we obtain the concentration in the injection taking 86 as the value of the extinction coefficient. If we substitute in the Lambert B equation all the data we have, we can find out that our injectables are 0 0.0049 grams per 100 milliliters. To calculate the percentage of the state dose in the sample, we have to divide the concentration found in the sample by the concentration we expected, or the manufacturer is claiming, and then multiply percent. Then 0 0.049 divided 0 0.005, which is the claimed content, times 100 makes up 98%. The pharmacopoeia allows you a generous margin of error in this case, a 10% of error, which we are easily complying with, as we only have a 2% of error. We have finished going through the most important types and examples of quantitative analysis applied to the quality control of medicine. This is not the end, as these lectures will be supported by a workshop, a practical, and in time, a revision. I wish you to stay safe and see you soon in the workshop. And any doubts, please let me know by email. Thank you very much.